Okay, good evening. Thanks um, everyone to like come back to this um, RoboCup at Home Education Online Challenge 2021 online classroom. Okay, so today we have standard platform Pepper 2.5 um, week number five. And today is also the last class for this uh, online classroom track. Uh, we will talk about Pepper movement and multimedia. And as the last class today also, we will take some time to summarize um, all the content that we have learned for the past five weeks. And also we will um, talk a little bit about the competition as well, right? So um, just in case that if you are not familiar with the competition and would like to know more or would like to interact with us or ask some question, we will have an interactive, uh, interactive session after uh, the class, okay? So please stay back and after we conclude the class, then we will have uh, the interactive session for us to talk about more about the class and also talk more about the competition. Okay, right. So let us get started with the, today's content. Okay, as usual, this class, um, uh, today's content is a bit um, more than usual, uh, but we will try to control to finish everything within two hours. So it's uh, 7 30 to 9 30. And um, just in case that you miss uh, the previous class or you would like to revise back or find back the materials, okay, you can go to the second link uh, in front of you to find all the previous class um, video, the class videos and also the slides that we presented. Okay, and as usual, um, you can get the link or anyone, uh, your friends or your colleague who are still on the way, you can send them the link so that they can um, join our class as soon as possible. All right, so before I start, uh, last uh, reminder for privacy, all the um, the whole class will be recorded and this video will be published online uh, later on uh, on our social media uh, channel and also on our classroom uh, material so please refrain from turning on your microphone and also your camera unless um, we are uh, changing to the interactive session then you're allowed to do so okay right okay so for today content, um, it is separate into two big parts. So the first part is the, this for pepper movement. So following what we have learned last week, pepper movement is uh, the movement of the whole body. So which means the whole pepper robot will move around. Okay, not on the same place, but move, will move around. So different from last week, which is we are talking about the human and uh, the robot body. So you can actually combine these two and you can have the movement of the body and also the movement of the uh, mobile platform so that you can have the whole um, arrangement for your dancing dance move and so on okay so um for this pepper movement um, arrangement or programming uh, we divide into two parts so the first one we will show you some example that we use it a lot which is this uh, people tracking so this is not really about um planning a ple pre-planned uh, movement, but more on using a special function in Pepper that it will automatically track someone in front, okay? Someone that you ask Pepper to follow. Then we will go to the basic movement. So this basic movement is the basic tools that you can use uh, for, for arranging or for designing uh, the path for the Pepper to move around, okay? Uh, we will talk a little bit more detail about how we can design this in Choreograph and also we will show you how this thing can be done in real robot. Okay, and for the second part of today's um, online classroom, we will also show you some simple uh, example how to use um, the tablet in front of the, the robot, which is you can play some multimedia uh, for example, you can play some videos, you can display a picture, or you can even play song throughout the movement of the robot. So you can use this thing to enhance the expression and also informa information providing of Pepper robot when you are designing a service robot, for example, in a retail uh, setting or in school or in any place that you would like to have um, not just the human, uh, the robot motion, but also uh, information in terms of, for example, web pages, um, videos, and so on. So 
uh, we will show you how you can easily show a web page and also easily show uh, play some video on the tablet. And this will further enhance uh, the expression of Pepper uh, when you are designing a service robot for a particular uh, application in information, information providing. Okay, right. So basically that uh, are the two parts um, for the technical parts for today's class. Then uh, before we end the whole class, we will do a conclusion because like today is the last class, so we will conclude uh, what you have learned for the past four weeks plus today, five weeks of content and what you can do with this um, function. Okay, we will show you some example and after that, we will also show you some example that uh, we have developed in our research team, which is some um, for your reference for your uh, further development. That once you put everything together, you can create a very complete service robot that you can actually uh, implement in various um, various different kind of application. Okay, so that is uh, the content for today. So we will start with the first one, which is the sorry, yeah, pepper movement. The first one, people tracking. Okay, so and normally we call it the, the follow me uh, example. For this people tracking, there are actually two um, instruction box that you can use. The first one is the face tracker and the second one is the people tracker. So by the name, you may know like the first one is tracking the face of the target and another one is tracking the people, which is more towards like it tracks the whole body. So it is actually use the whole body as a reference or use the face as a reference, but both actually give you quite a uh, similar output, which is like the robot will try to move towards uh, the target. OK, so that is the function of this uh, people tracking. But inside there, there are actually uh, a few more modes that you can choose, both in um, this face tracker and also people tracker, which is namely the head, whole body and move. So this three uh, setting uh, actually it's not about the target, but about pepper. So the head over here or the whole body or move over here refer to pepper. So this mode actually um, to specify if you want pepper to just track that person, only the head that is tracking. OK, the, OK, so it is a bit weird to, to say in this way, but uh, you just want pepper head to track that person, right? Or you want the whole body to track the person or you want the whole like robot to move around in order to track the target that you want. OK, so this one maybe will be clearer later on during the demonstration. But over here, you just need to remember that there are three modes in both face tracking and also people tracking. Right, so as usual, you can download this example from our um, repository. And once you open up this uh, under movement there, there is a track uh, program so you can open up and you can see like um, inside they got this um, two sets two sets of um, instruction box that you can use both for the first one example for the face tracking and the second one for the uh, people tracking and then you can see from the line you can see like the first set is for you to do to try on the face that's why you don't actually use um, both face tracking and also body tracking uh, at the same time. You just use one at one time. Either you track the person in uh, using the face or you track the person using the whole body. OK, so you might need to change this line when you switch uh, which mode you go. Uh, then you also can realize that this is a, a, com a, a combination of um, instruction box that we can look further. Okay, so let's um, go inside and see what uh, the things inside there. So inside this face track um, instruction box, this one. OK, so you can find the original face tracker. OK, so this one is the original face tracker, but um, we might want to know like what are the input and output. OK, so let's go back and see what are the input and output. OK, so for the face tracker, the input is um, on stop and start. So this is quite usual, but for the people tracker, it got an additional of this people ID. OK, so this people ID is something that is 
uh, different from the face tracker, which is uh, you need additional information for this. Uh, this one I will leave to like um, Austin to explain to you what is this um, people ID uh, during the demonstration to show the difference. Then for the output, both looks quite identical. You can see like we have uh, on stop, which is on stop, but the location is uh, different, but function are the same. Then we have the target loss and target target reach. So target loss is like when this face tracker um, cannot find the target. OK, then it will give you uh, an indicator uh, from this port, which is uh, this target loss. All it is actually following, it can track one face in front. Then it will also show you uh, one signal, which is um, coming out from this target reach. So similarly, the same thing happened in um, people tracker. OK, so now you know like this. So this one is uh, on stop, so on stop will go to the stop. So once you finish the tracking uh, duty, then it will stop. But you know, one is for the uh, target loss and one is for the target reach. So I assume this is the target loss. So it actually connect to a text box, which is um, inside they say, I can't see you, where are you? And this one connect to this say text. So you can imagine that when the face tracker cannot find the target, then it will instruct Pepper to say this sentence, right? Then when it is following, which is like it, it found the target and it is running the, the tracking program, then it will also say something which is like, uh, in this case is the I am following, right? So this is basically the um, whole idea about this um, people tracking that using the face tracker, right? Then the next one is uh, for the body track, which is this one is for the people tracking. Um, this part, the behind part is like the same as the face tracking, but we need an additional of um, ID, people ID. So for this people ID, we need to use some um, additional input, which is over here, it will generate an output ID for you uh, to track the person. Okay, right. So detail, this one, I will leave it to um, Austin. Uh, but these two, uh, people tracking or face tracking actually give you very similar um, effect when you do the operation. Okay, so you will see something like this. Okay, so once it's follow that person, then you start to like keep the distance with the front person and then keep on following. And you can actually adjust this as part of the parameter. Okay, so if you open up the face tracker or people tracker, Inside there, there are actually a few parameters that you can choose. So this is the effect that you want to know. And over here, if you look closely, this is using the move mode. So that's why the whole robot is actually like moving in front, uh, following the target. But if let's say you are using the whole body or the head, then actually Pepper won't be like following the person going forwards. It will just like moving the whole body to the front if let's say like you use the whole body or it will actually move the head towards the direction if you just set for the head. So that, that are the difference between them. And uh, when you need to use some um, people tracking or when you need to use face tracking, uh, it is depends on your environment and also on your target. So just in case like if you want to follow someone which is like just look at the behind, then you might not able to see the face, then maybe you need to use the face tracking uh, mode. And also all these things will be heavily depend on the lighting condition of your environment, which is it will be a good idea for you to try both and see which give you a better result. OK, I will um, I, I finish the, the explanation for this uh, example, then I'll pass to Austin to show you the demonstration. OK, Austin. Yeah, yeah. Um, OK, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, it's a good evening, every teachers or our uh, students. We're gonna have this program running, and um, before that, uh, I hope you guys just download the, the GitHub repository and to use uh, simple. So here is the. Uh, uh, let me see. Okay, see. Okay. Let me. Here is our programming. Programming codes here. Uh, today we're gonna have two course combination. Uh, one was the movement, another is gonna multimeter. 
So this course, I'm gonna try to present the tracking function and uh, like uh, the, uh, the way uh, we always use the uh, uh, core graph, we just open this uh, PML uh, file. Once we open this, um, um, uh, this file, we know that it's only two, uh, two instructor box we used um, in this program. One is face tracking, another is kind of uh, pe pe people tracking, but we can also reference as body tracking. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a very standard kind of box. We can search from this box library, like uh, the face tracking. I'm gonna try to search on it. Face tracking and another one's I've got it. People tracking. People tracker. Oh, okay. Look back to the to this program uh, workflow. We know that it's it's very easy. We can see through that this program how how this program running. Uh, like the way we start from start a program like from this on start and try to connect to the face tracker. But it, obviously this is a combination box. Um, before we enter into this business fake tracker, we should know why we use the late the late uh, box. <clears throat> so, uh, well, like what what I what I told told you guys before is the late box is also is a st standard box, but I'm gonna tr try to make right here to comparison with the name and the icon, even the setting and the inputs outputs. I think it, it's got nothing to change. Okay. So we really care about this 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 combination box. Mm, from this logic, we can see the two lines are just out from start. One of the to connect to the face tracker is on uh, start, and another one is trying to uh, activate activate the delay delay box. Why we use this? Um, we use delay to try to make this program running because because sometimes we know uh, it's a critical resource in computer that means the face tracking always using on using our uh the vision vision pepper so when we finish all the programming we need to release all the resources to let other people or the other programmers use it so that's the reason why we use delay the 30 seconds to try to make stop the face track okay the important part is about the programming here we know uh the same logic from the face track and the body track we what we cut we cut is body track, but it also means people track because we use we use the body to track the people and another one is use the face. Okay, under uh, this is same logic, we need. Uh, I'm gonna explain explain the, the first of flow like uh, the face track. I'm gonna double click on it. It's a obviously it's a um, combination box. And they use the first one. They, they use this face track. We know that it's the command box. We're gonna uh, first. First of all, we should com comparison with the, those two face tracker on the drive here. We can compare those two from the name icon, and uh, we we saw we, we will see that uh, the different they can have different order, like uh, different order outputs. This one's like a target lost. And what is it? and on stop and even on a targeted reach and this, the from the standard box we know that is an on stop and uh, target lost even the target reach but it's the same but it, they, they just only have the different sort of order so we're gonna see what what was this box and used for uh, we're trying to check the inspector we know that uh, we will check like this. The name is face tracker and description is this box makes the robot track a face with different modes. Okay, they have obviously we know this function like it just only track the face, but it but they have different different parameter, so kind of different modes, right? We need to check this setting and delay this one and uh, try to make this track uh, this setting open. Uh, we, we can see here they have lots of parameters we can use. But we're gonna explain the first one. It's a mode, uh, but it's, it's reference to uh, uh, the pepper's body. It's only reference to the um, pepper. It's not a human being because we use head and whole body move. That means when we face track, uh, uh, how we use how 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 part uh, which which part we use pepper to uh, track uh, track people. 
that means from the face, when we, when we try, when we, when we track the face, then we're gonna use the move mode to uh, move around to close to close to people. And otherwise it's gonna hold body, just a, like a lean down to people to make it, they, they just track you and head, head even just, just is like a, the head is just a lean forward and to try to know all, to know well, the people is around here. Okay, so th at this part, we only, we're, we're trying to make a move mode because we can't want Pepper to move around close to people. And uh, obviously, it's um, uh, gonna see the effector. And otherwise, the effector, uh, they have the arm as a, uh, L, as a left arm, it's even right arm. That means we, uh, we can do some animations like uh, to make arms or arms to move, okay. Others like uh, we try to how we uh, how how we move to people with this parameter like uh, the the y's and distance x and uh, threshold like maybe you can just do this um, parameter to uh, move slowly to close to people or you can you very quickly to move to people that's the that's the parameter meaning okay well we're gonna click on OK on it. And the, the important part is about the face tracker. And we know the inputs, outputs. We can see the color here is all black. That means this is a normal, normal, normal input outputs is on active. So here we're gonna uh, deep, uh, we're gonna deep, deep detail about this face track. We're gonna double click this box. We can see here. Uh, one thing we need to um, notice about this one, the subscribe to events. Why we why we mentioned this part? Because when we back try try back to this uh, uh, this body tracker or people tracker, um, double click on, we can see this. They use the box like the subscribe subscribe to events. So we're gonna I'm gonna uh, talk of the different ways that we we implement this program. But it, but they they have the same logic, right? So where's the sub subscribe to events? We can try to search on it on that. When we, when we drag this event into here, we can compare with that, it's the same. So nothing to worry about. We're gonna delay and try to make a sense of what is it, what is the subscribed event? It's meant, that means it's subscribed to signal on now Qi 2 survey service and the events on now Qi shared mem memory. So I think you, you guys don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but I, I want to mention back about this logic. We can see here. They have two icon, the uh, two plus icon here. The, the, this one, is we, we, as we well, we know, is gonna add inputs, and also this one. I just uh, give you um, give a lecture about how we use this one. This that means add event from ear or memory, right? So it's like the same descriptions like uh, now it's sharing memory. So all the events just adding or uh, preload into the ear memory when we when we start the 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 pepper that means all the events are just waiting for uh, some event to happen to happen to pepper that means it's gonna and um, trigger this event to make something happen okay we're gonna try to click on it we can see all the events we can we can use uh let me give give an example like uh from the chest button how about a with double click is a, a double click is a button to chest button that means they have events come coming out from this part when we click on it, we can see here this this event is just adding on in it. We, when we check, when we double click the chest button, and we're gonna do something uh, into this program. That's the that's the meaning of the events. So when we double click the face tracker, we know that uh, uh, they use the codes to describe to use the subscribe to events function. That means that they use AL tracker and active target change. That means we want to pepper to have target to track the, those the three parts we use AL active target change and the target loss and target reached. It's equals to the three out, outputs here. So that's the meaning why we use the events in base tracker. And also we're gonna try to find where is that. Okay, tracker, the track. 
all the trackers have different meanings. So we can we know that we use different uh, face tracker and they even have the human tracker and the tracker people not found. All the events we can use to uh, make this program running. But in this logic, we only use to use to face track. Okay, let me let me uh, focus on the outputs. So the, um, before that, we know that the input is kind of the same on start and on stop, just to make the, the box to work or not. And uh, from the first first output, that means the target loss. Uh, this is tracking uh, just uh, use the vision, the paper's vision to uh, track uh, uh, in front of people to make to, to know the people is uh, exist or not. If they didn't have the people in front paper, that means the target lost. They're gonna they're gonna have transfer to tax edit one to make the paper to say something. And uh, this those two boxes means we want a paper to say I can see you and where are you like to make it happen. But it didn't didn't to connect to the final uh, the, the, to over the program. But when we can see the second uh, second output, that means on stop. When we're gonna stop this traffic tracker, that means we're gonna use this one uh, to make this face, face tracker. But where this where this stop come from? Going back to the root, we know that here. One is it's the when we done with this thirty minutes uh, over, that means we're gonna stop the face tracker. So that's the meaning we connect connect to this one. Okay, only oh, double click on it, and we can see this uh, the third uh, post is the uh, it's um, target reach and uh, trying to make some make the pepper to see um, I'm following you. Okay, that's it's very simple, but. Uh, uh, we will see the different implementation between the face tracker and, and the body tracker. So back to the uh, body tracker, uh, people tracker, and I would double click on, click on it. We just use the subscribe to events, but they have the uh, body ID. We can see here the people ID. That means we we need to track the people find uh, the, the helps algorithm to trying to describe what, what this is the people or not. What if just um, some uh, chair or other things in, in front of people in front of pepper? That means that means that this this not a people ID. This is trying to uh, uh, identify it is people or not, right? So this one we're gonna use the subscribe event. We the, it's a it's a simple uh, com command box. We're gonna click a setting, and we also can see people detect. That means the people detect, body detect, when this event, uh, uh, event signals out, that means we can do something like uh, the on events, they're gonna happen. And uh, the, we will see that two lines out of this on event, why? Because we, when we detect people, we're gonna close, this one is gonna stop this subscribe event, event because it's a critical resource. And another line is trying to make the, the events out to trying to make another box. What is this box? When we double click on it, we know that it's a Python script, right? What is a Python script? We're gonna try to find it, Python script. It's empty script. We use to try to make, uh, to, to writing some codes on it to make a logical well. When we double click on it, we know all the structure of the, this class, but also when they have only one line code to try to make this a uh, people ID. We can we can see here they have three dimensions. The first, but we only use the first dimension, the P1, right, to get the the, the ID. But I don't care what about the ID is. But we really to know somebody just in front in front of pepper. Okay. When we when we try to make this people ID work, they to out to to connect to our uh, the uh, standard uh, command box to people tracker. Okay, we're gonna try to find the people tracker. Oh, once we have uh, some special or some new box, command box, we need to know uh, it's a, it is different or not be, uh, between the standard one and uh, the new one. So we compare the compare the name and icon, and even setting and uh, outputs to make this uh, um, to compare this box is new or not. 
So it's kind of the same. I'm not completely honest. And uh, what we care about the uh, the other color is kind of active active button or, or active input or active outputs. Only they have 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 a parameter. This different color here is a great it's great one. That means they have accepted the dynamic number. That means it's a number uh, the people's ID, right? So when we get this people people ID and uh, we, we we use this function people track to track the people. And uh, we also see they, are, they have three outputs. One of them, that's the uh, target lost and on stop it and then another one is uh, our target reach. Okay, and afterward, that's all the same with um, all the same with the face track. So we're gonna try the different different one. Uh, but I may need to my colleagues to give me help for that. Though so I'm gonna share the first one like this logic. We, we tried to make the pepper face track. <clears throat> okay, thank you. I'm gonna collect, uh, connect my pepper. I'm gonna stop the screen sharing and open the camera. Okay, this this is this is a pepper, a real pepper in from in front of us, and also my colleagues in um, trying to make make the track. Okay, I'm gonna run this program. I'm gonna running. I can't see you. Where are you? Oh, the first one always focused on the face. Face. They didn't I'm catch it. Okay, they're gonna follow you. This is recognize it's, it's a human. Okay, you can move back. Okay, ah, uh, okay. We didn't, we, we see that the pepper is not a move because um, their hatch is not close. So they kind of that means it can move. So before that, we use this program. We need to remember that we always close this this part, the hatch, to make pepper active. Okay, I'm gonna try in this programmer again and show sure this kind of work. I I think I can uh, see how it work. I can't see you. Where are you? I can't see you. Where are you? You can. That way, that way. You can move back. That way. Okay, this is just trying to uh, connect to people, but uh, but I didn't uh, recognize the face, first of all. Oh, it's uh, almost done. How about I will just uh, uh, stand there, stand there. It's uh, like a little far from the pepper. We're gonna try to make that work. Oh, out, out. Okay, oh? you can stand there. Okay, we're gonna try to make the pepper, uh, the trauma running again. Okay, we can see it. Just a target reached. That means it's gonna move close to our colleague, right? You can't move back a little bit. They're gonna catch you. Yes, yes. But in case, but in this condition, just remember that we have we must have big space for let pepper to move because uh, if it got something or it can if sometimes you always gotta can't run this program running work. That means you have a private uh, space. It's not that that's the meaning. So, okay, I'm gonna try back to my program, but I still I need my colleagues help, but I would just wait a little bit, okay? <clears throat> and I'm gonna try to share my screen. Uh, so that's the that's the one we're running the face track. That means it's gonna track your face and move close to you. And the same, it's the same uh, like the body track. So we're gonna delay the logic, the first one. And we're gonna try the same logic with the body, body track. We're gonna collect the delay one and another one is to try to make the body track and the uh, output to finish the program. It's very easy. It's the same like uh, the face track, okay. 
uh, we're gonna double click on it, try to see what happened uh, when, when, when we got a people track. Still, it's gonna move, right? Okay, let this time I'm gonna try to run this program and to see um, the people, just the, the pepper doesn't need to recognize the face. Just the, our, our colleague is just back to, back to pepper and they just recognize the body and try to move close to pepper, uh, to, to the people. Okay. This other program, um, maybe it's like the same part as the last time. And close. Okay, you can see there. I'm gonna run program. I can't see you. Where are you? Okay, back, back, back. Just move. Yeah, you can see the. Just the recognize the body, and then the pepper just try to move close to the the people's ID. I can't see you. Yeah, you? but you kind of recognize because this is far away from the from pepper. So that that's it. Yeah. Okay, it's over over thirty seconds. So that's the program is done. Thanks, uh, colleagues, Edwards. Thank you very much. And uh, that's all the program we're running, and we're gonna continue our course. And I'm back to Jeffrey. Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> right. Thanks, Austin, and also Edward, uh, to show the demonstration. So there are a few points that maybe I would like to add. Okay, first let me switch back to my screen. Okay, so for this people tracking, uh, actually it's quite classic for at home and we will have, uh, we, we actually usually have part of the task that require the robot to follow uh, the operator for some um, operation in the competition task. And then over here, you can see like we actually um, need to do some complicated uh, operation uh, as compared to the face tracking, which is um, very easy. I mean, you don't need the extra people ID and you don't need to subscribe to the event and everything works automatically with just the face tracking mode. So that one is easier to use, but the problem is like usually when you want robot to follow someone, and when that person is moving forwards, so usually it is like not facing the robot, okay? So naturally it is that way. So that's why we need to use the people tracking, which is you need to um, use the people detection um, event in order to trigger uh, the ID. So that is uh, the, the, the additional effort that we need to put in, but you can see like we actually able to uh, do the tracking, although that person is uh, like facing back to the robot. Uh, but over here, there are a few things that you can improve. For example, like um, over here, we just for simplicity, we set to like the delay is like the 30 second. So um, in competition, maybe you can change it to like a searching mode, right? So you can move the robot forwards or go to the direction that previously uh, he found the robot. So for example, like previously, okay, the robot is following someone and then suddenly it's lost uh, the vision or lost that person uh, inside the range of the vision. And then you can see like from where the person go, you can ask the robot to move around to try to search or you can use the voice to ask the person to come back. Okay, so these are a few strategy that you can add on in order to improve your people tracking uh, functionality of the robots. And um, I think it is very rewarding for you to come up with a very nice um, people following program. And also um, this uh, function will be very important for the competition as well. And, and if you look through the rule books, you know like there are uh, a few um, tasks that require such a uh, function. And also for this, you can actually design quite a nice um, application as well. For example, like um, in a lot of retail um, application or operation and some other like in school and so on, there are times that you want the robot to follow a person for some operation. For example, like uh, they've got one that 
um, for example, in the museum. Okay, so in a museum, you might want the guiding one. So the robot is actually guiding the person. But in some cases, you might want the robot to follow. For example, in the school, you want the robot to follow the teacher and then to do some assistant and so on. So uh, this program is very popular and also we use a lot. So that's why we, we put it over here for you to refer. OK, so let's go to the next uh, part. Oops, OK. So next one, um, we'll show you some basic um, steps for you to design the movement for Pepper. And there are a few steps actually. I mean, a few um, toolbox, uh, this instruction box that you can use. So um, over here, we will introduce you four instruction boxes, which is uh, the first one is a move along. Second one is move to. Third one is move towards and compass move to. So you can see like four, the name is quite similar and without looking inside, you actually don't know much about what are the difference between these boxes. Okay, so I'll explain one by one. So move along is uh, you can design the path of the movement uh, on a 2D plane, which is over here. It is uh, called a dot PMT file. So you will design the route or the, the path that the pepper supposed to move along and then you will attach this file with this instruction box and you will execute okay with uh, with a PM, pmd file okay so later we will show you how to create this pmd file but uh, for this move along to work you need to design uh, a path okay and then the input output is like on start on stop so this one is uh, very straightforward uh, the output is success or failure. Okay, so success or failure, I think, is also quite uh, straightforward because, like in programming, if let's say like all the condition uh, meet, uh, you're supposed to move. I mean, like this is supposed to be executed unless some uh, problem with the program, then it will give you the failure or some uh, condition of the robot didn't meet. For example, like the robot is not in the condition to move, then it might give you the failure signal. Okay, so this is for the move along. Then the next one is move to. So move to is a very simple one. Okay, move to is you want the robot to move to a given distance. Okay, and then you you specify this distance in term of x, y, and theta, which is from the original position, which is like regardless where it start when you execute this, uh, the starting point will be the original uh, position of the robot. Then from there it will go to the x and y and theta. Okay, and you need to take note like um, where is the x axis and where is the positive x and where is the positive y. Uh, that one you need to follow the pepper convention, but later on, once you try, you know. And also the theta. The theta is like how you want the robot to rotate according to a certain angle. And the starting position and the starting angle will be zero. Okay, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so the reference is always start from uh, where you start from. And for the input and output, input is similar on start and start. But the output, uh, instead of success failure, the output for move to is on arrive at destination or on stop before arriving. So which means it's actually very similar to success or failure because like if success, then the robot arrive at the destination, right? Then if failure, that means it stopped before arriving. So that means it stopped somewhere. That's why it failure or even it don't move at all. So it gives you. So these two are actually very similar uh, meaning. OK, so the third one is move towards. OK, so this move towards, uh, it don't have a, a definite or, or you don't define the target. So this one, you don't have a target because in this move towards, what you need to specify is the x position, y position, uh, sorry, x direction, y direction velocity. Okay, so you need to say what is the velocity for x and y. And this velocity, once you set inside there, then it will stay at this velocity and Pepper will keep on moving until you try to reduce this velocity to zero, then only stop or you can give and stop input, right? So if you if you ask for a stop, which is like you can use the input output for the stop, uh, you can give a signal or you try to change the, for the, the velocity to zero, then only the robot will stop. So please take note that when you use this move towards um, instruction box, you need to have a mechanism to stop the robot or else it will just 
go uh, into the direction that you set until it actually crashed to something. OK, so make sure you take notice on this uh, condition and always for move towards, you need to have a stop condition. OK, right. And then the last one is this compass move to. OK, so you can see the, the, the name and this move to, they are actually related. So move to is you give a target distance, which is like X, Y and theta, then it will try to stop there. For example, like you give like five to the X and four to the Y, right? Then it will stop there. So that is the target position. But the thing is for move to, it is actually an open loop. So which means the robot try to measure uh, the movement of the wheel in order to calculate the distance. So it might not be so accurate because this is, it is an open loop operation. But for compass move to, it try to close the loop by adding the visual correction function. Okay. Okay. How it do it, you might need to know like the algorithm, which is some, um, I can't find a reference for the algorithm. Okay. So that is uh, the calculation inside the paper software. But what um, explained here is like it will use the visual perception to see the surrounding as a reference. So for example, like when you look at certain target and then it know like how big is the target, then when it move a certain uh, uh, distance, then you try to see uh, the movement. Is it tally with the distance that you want? Okay. So, which means it got the vision as a, a secondary uh, measurement to try to make the movement more accurate. Okay, so for the input output, it's like you got on start and stop, okay, and then on stop and failure. So it's very much similar, the same thing also for move towards. Uh, but the problem with this compass move to is like it will take longer time, which means it actually move slower in order for the visual um, calculation to take place. So if you want more accurate um, movement, then you can try to use this, but you might want to compare this with the move to and see how big is the difference. Uh, whether it's uh, because like how big is the error actually um, will determine by many factors. For example, like the condition of the uh, the condition of the floor that the pepper operate on top and also the condition the, the surrounding condition uh, for example like outdoor indoor uh, the surface and and so and also the evenness of the ground and so on and all this will actually give a lot of um disturbance right to this condition and for this because it's using vision so if let's say like uh, the lighting condition in your environment is also very noisy, then it might don't give you a good result for this compass move too. So um, I would suggest you try both and see which one gives you a better result. Okay, just in case you, you are using this for a dance move that you need pepper to calculate the distance so that you want pepper to stop at a particular place, then maybe you need to take note on this. Right, so uh, as usual, so you open up the example that I'm um, given then you can see like we actually like put down um, the move along, move to, compass move to, and also the last one is move towards and with a time delay for this move towards to for the for the resources arrangement. Uh, and for you to see how it actually um, take place one by one, but for this you need one more extra step before you can run this program is you need to create the uh, PMT file that I say for your move along. So in order to create the PMT file, you need to once you drag all this thing and put it here and connect like this, then you can create the planner move. Okay, over here under your property, create planner move, which is this will bring up one new interface for you to create your PMT file. But before that, you need to put in the name for your PMT file. And please remember this name because later on you need to link back to this file. Okay. Then for this, um, how to draw the how to draw the path? Okay, I will let Austin to demonstrate to you because like it's easier for you to visualize rather than I explain to you. But a few key points that you need to know. Let me explain. First is like the box inside this. It is 50 cm, okay, length in length, both uh, in the grid. The grid is like 50 cm in space. 
then you will have uh, the green circle which indicate the starting position of the robot and the red circle indicate the end position of the uh, robot but this end position is just for one path i'm uh, sorry one trajectory so over here uh, you got a few different name so one is new path and another one is new new trajectory new path is the waypoint inside one trajectory okay so for example like this one is considered one uh, trajectory and for your whole pmt file currently we have two trajectories okay and in one trajectory uh, if you see if, if you can see this white color dot or one circle dot this indicate uh, a waypoint okay or or I should say this is one path so this one is one path this is another path because in um, this when you draw this uh, how to say the path for the robot to move when you want to draw in this PMT file it only can draw like straight and also curve okay and if you want to change from straight to curve you need to put a waypoint there so that's why it is like if you want to create a square for example if you want to create a square you need to have four paths okay which is like every time you go to one edge okay then you create a new path then you create another edge and so on okay but you can also use this new trajectory to how to say to come up with a new set of movement okay so for example like this one is one trajectory this is another trajectory and if you combine them two, you will have something like this. So you have two trajectory and then you've got like different number of path inside there. Okay, so this is how, but I think you will understand better later on during the demonstration. And other things that you need to notice is like the frame rate. Okay, so you can determine what, how fast your frame rate you want, and which is normally over here is like 25 frame per second. So which means like one second got 25 frame and you will design this thing based on the frame so over here it is indicate uh, it indicates like which frame are you you can also play this to preview how the robot move along the path okay and where you want to set the movement or the location is like you can set it over here the location uh, for the starting and ending point you can set it over here and also you can set the orientation which is how many degree you want the robot to change then you can set it over here so once you set this thing then the this circle will move accordingly and then you can see the path okay so if you want a curved path you can actually drag the straight line and it will become like like a like a, a curved path and so on okay right so for more detail you can see like later on during the demonstration how this thing can be done okay but this one will actually um give you a platform for you to draw the a more accurate path that you want Pepper to move along. Okay. And I think this will be very useful if you want to like design a dance move that the robot need to move in a big uh, space. Okay. So uh, once you finish the PMT file, which is uh, these four are the four setting that when you press out from this Okay, this four instruction box. So starting from move along, move to, compass move to, and move towards. Okay, so you can see like it corresponds to one of each. So for move along, you need to indicate where is your trajectory file, which is a PMT file. So you need to uh, link it over here. Then for move to, and also the compass move to, which is this two, you can see these two actually look almost identical, okay? which is you just specify the distance in X and Y and also the data, how you want to change and the rest like it will go automatically. But for the move towards, you are actually putting the value of the X velocity or Y velocity, okay, over here. And um, you need to know like what to set. And over here for this uh, uh, example, you can set according to this value and you see how it moves. Right, so you'll get something like this. It will start to move, turn, right? Then it will go straight, sorry. It will go straight, then it will turn, sorry, yeah. Then it will go to another direction, and then it will go back. So it's like square, then it will go diagonal. 
Okay. Right. So so that is basically uh, once you put everything together, you'll get something like this. Okay, because of the setting and also the path that we draw up just now. Okay, maybe you don't understand that why the robot move like this, but if you put back just now uh, the line that you draw in the PMD file plus the few boxes behind there, then eventually you'll get something like this. Okay, okay, but for more detail, let's look at the demonstration. Okay, so Austin, pass to you. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, thank, thank you, Jeffrey Ross. Mm, so, so I think this is a very easy part uh, uh, for this course, and because we just need what yeah. we need to just understand what was different this box about at the moment. So I'm gonna open our moment demo, basic, basic moment. And we, we we can see here it's how the it's kind of parallel um programming that means we're gonna try to run this 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 move long and and then gonna stop at the move two and encompass the move two and even at the at the last one it's kind of move forward so the logic is kind of simple and very easy um well, we, we, what we need to do just to understand what's details about the what's different between those four moments along. Okay. Austin need the uh, screen. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So I'm uh, open this program, and then we know we have the four um, uh, four very standard structure box, and then from the first one, we know this move long, uh, but. We, before before that, we we need to know how to move long mode two and even the compass mode two and uh, the last one is more towards it belongs to movements. That means we're gonna use the uh, pepper's wheel to make pepper move. Um, but also we it's a, it's very different between the between the between the animation and the movements. Um, the animation always focus on the um, the upper body, and but. Uh, all these parts about movement, uh, the, but this moment always focus on the wheels. Okay, let me produce this first one to uh, move along. Okay, we're, we're gonna try to search on our uh, box, um, box library. <clears throat> okay, see here, move along. And uh, even, even, even it, it is it's a standard uh, structure box we need we what we need to do just a uh, just uh, to know what is what is this description about so this move along that means it's more along a trajectory given by or attached dot pmt file so let's back to the move along we're gonna see the setting parts when when we close and we'll, we'll open this one we can see the they need a parameter but they only have one parameters like that. It's a planner, movement trajectory, and we can search a file from our project file. And uh, finally, we will find this movement PMT file. So where is that? So we're gonna try to um, back to the project file. We can see here translation, they have the behavior and the translation, uh, even it's manifest. Also, we kind of see here is a basic movement PML. Right, so that's a uh, that's equals to this one. Mm. Oh, oh, this is a moment. We can try to find the it's a, oh, it's a PML. Okay, I think uh, this program is lost the moment of PMT, but we can create it by ourselves. But how? There's one way we can do by click this uh button. Or when we try, we can see here that we they have the create directory, uh, create uh, create, create a behavior dialogue topic, and this one is a planner moment. And when we click on it, we try to this moment right. The name is moment. We're gonna click on it, and we have the uh, new panel pop up. Uh, this uh, this uh, panel we can use. We can uh, edit edit the trajectory. To make pepper move like our look on it right so 
uh, the, on the surface side, we can see uh, they have the property and the, and the trajectory orientation, even and points. So we're gonna introduce how we make this pepper move as as we want. The red the red icon here is a circle. Then the but as it has an arrow inside. That means it's a start point. Okay. When we're trying to mm, new uh, new pass, we need to drag the red one and uh, move somewhere we want to put it put it put it on. So th at this time, we're gonna try make pepper move like a 50, 50 cm and like a half a meter. And uh, then we, what if we wanna turn the pepper to move move as the trajectory, uh, trajectory, we need to new pass on this one. So we can see there's a new, new dot, new dot here, right? So the new dot is the second pass uh, connected to this, um, uh, this ending, this ending point. Okay, that's this is very easy. We we also can move uh, to and add a lot of new paths on it. We can move add it on and try to make pepper move like this. It's very easy. Okay, um, let's back. Uh, uh, mm, we know how we make this project move move. This trajectory as pepper move. We need to know the details about the property. They have the frame rate. It's like uh, it's, it's similar like the animation editing. That means we they have the twenty five uh, frame rate uh, per second, and also from the offside and the tick uh, take take every at every five frame. This all of that just uh, uh, try to calculate how far and how quickly make the pepper move like that, right? Okay, they have the uh, trajectory orientation and they have two options like automatically or the manual. But the, at this time, we try to make the manual to, to make our, our trajectory orientation. <clears throat> okay, uh, about the, uh, the this, this part is a key, keyframe keyframe they have the start frame and end frame direction this also is like uh, um to let me let us know let, let us know um, how frame we're running and uh, maybe we can try to calculate uh, to uh, divide it at 25 to know how what time they use to finish all this uh, all this past right okay they have the th third button here and uh, Maybe we don't have the pepper. We can try to know how the pepper move from from the ending point from the start point to the ending point. So when we try to make it run like that, we can see there's a that the white dot is run, running try uh, try to running the trajectory we made. Okay, this make it makes us clear. And also they have pause and stop. And it, but one of the important parts that it's a relative orientation, right? How about how how about we try to um, make pepper uh, to face the direction? Right now we just know that uh, they, they try to same direction as the start start point. So maybe we can try to um, upside 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 not uh, upside side to uh, make pepper uh, ending. We can try to make the the relative orientation. We can see that the, the arrow, the arrow in the circle is a turn, turn right, and when we double click, adding the values on. Maybe we can try to uh, eighty and one hundred eighty, and to make another direction. Right, this is a zero degree, and at the end, this pepper just uh, face another another orientation. It's um uh one hundred eighty degrees. Okay, that's just kind of an easy way to make um, our pepper move from our project uh, trajectory. It's uh, very easy, and then we're gonna click OK, and you can see here this is a movement PMT just uh, uh, produced. And uh, back to the move along, we can try to um, edit in our the project. Um, you can see here we're gonna add it on. Maybe once we, we will try to move along, this is a move uh, as we want.
Okay, that's all the move along. That means it depends on other cell, other files we made uh, to uh, to to move to move, right? And the second one is move too. I think this is a, this is a very easy one. And um, well, first of all, we can try to search the move too. Okay, all, all three other all three other move, move movement uh, function we can see here move to and a compass move to and move toward. That's all the three here. First of all, we can see the move to. Uh, they just make robot. This is the direction. Make the robot move to a configured point relative to its current location. Right. When when we click the setting parts, we can see distance x meter, uh, distance y meter. Because this is a, this is a try to uh, move as the um, distance, and that means we have half a half a meter here uh, on, on x on x and uh, half a meter on y. That means we try to make 40, 45 degrees to uh, move this paper. And another one is the setup. And how about we're gonna change the this the x is zero and y is zero by trying to uh, adding some. Uh, values on theta. That means we turn, we just uh, turn our pepper round, but without even if we move forward and move back, even left to right, it didn't move. This is a turn round with this with this x with the d d d direction, right? Okay. Just remember, d just depends on the meter distance, right? Okay. How about we trying to compare with the last one move toward when we it's all the it's all the normal structure come box so when we click on it it just said only x no distance and no other things no meters there's only x y theta and a period direction updates and r moment enable okay well uh, let me introduce the last one just uh when we move when we use the move tower they just uh when we when we enable this arm movement in both, that means the one the arm is gonna move the, the arm is gonna move when we um when, when the pepper move move tower. And the period direction that depends on X and Y. The X, Y is not the, the meters, the this this distance this is uh, uh speed. We try to make it pepper uh, um, how speed how speed it can run uh, with this number, but it's on X direction. And another is kind of on y direction. That means we're gonna move pepper on uh, zero point two on y uh, direction. Another is kind of one point one point two on x direction. And the theta is also is the uh, also the uh, uh, turn in the circle. Okay, okay. That means it's gonna update period direction and on um, on the zero point one seconds. This is it's always update trying to make pepper uh, move like this speed, right? That means it don't no stop. This is a trying to uh, run with this uh, this parameter. Okay, that means what would mean? That means this kind of critical resource. It's always use the will to make pepper move. That means we, we, so like the last course we uh, we talk. We need to have the delay to make the. Moment tower to uh, moment tower to stop to stop and the the, the pepper gonna stop and or uh, stop running okay otherwise this is pepper gonna run forever okay that's the difference between the more tower and a move move two that means the one of the depends on the um a distance another one is kind of on the speed okay last one we will focus on the compass move two like uh, we can try to compare with this one and. Um, See the description here to make the robot move to the configure configure point relative to its current location using camera. Okay, it's the same direction. This this description as move tool, but they also adding a, a conditions like using camera to correct deviation. So the first of all, let me see the setting. Distant x, distant y. Okay, it's the same like it's in uh, with the move tool, um, but. Uh, but what was different between them, they only try to add in condition like using camera to correct deviation. Um, as, you, as you know, when we when try to do some project like SLAM, 
uh, we always we always using laser on laser on paper, trying to uh, calculate the distance between the obstacle and uh, to calculate the, um, the how far we how far we were running. But it's it's all depends on number. But what if but after that we have the V slam. That means the vision slam. V slam that you use a camera to crack the vision, right? So that's the same, that's the same, same stereo. So like this compass mode too, they're trying to um, not only use the laser, they also use, they also, they also use the vision to try to make it the, uh, the number is correct to make the right point. So they, they, all, they all four move, movements use different uh, scenes. You can, you can use um, move, move along, with the specific specific uh, uh, specific path and move to 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 move the fixed position as you want, but but if you you, you really care about the uh, the exact the exact number that people run, we can use the compass move too. Another one is kind of move tower right tower. This always gonna never gonna stop unless you gotta you got unless you're gonna stop on it. So uh, that's all the logic of this program. They're trying to move along, and uh, what if it's a failure? They all finish all the program. Another one has got a success. Run the move two, and another is what it, when it's arrived at this ten, this um, uh, destination, and it's gonna uh, try to run the compass move two. But they also have two um, outputs failure. Finish out the program. Another one, they have two lines out. One of that to tower to move to, and another is delay. When the delay finished is five seconds, they're gonna stop the move tower, and all the program is done. It's, it's over. So that's the whole picture of the program. Well, how about let me try to make this uh, program run? How's it happening in Pepper? Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and um, open my camera. We can see here uh, it's a pepper in front of us. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna try and make pepper run this direction. But let's see what happening in that. Okay. Okay, before that, we we should know we need to close the hatch to make pepper move as we want. Okay, this is just a, it just a move our trajectory. Oh, we got failure, but it's just okay. And we're gonna try to more space from here. I'm gonna run again. You can see Pepper move. Okay. I'm gonna try to run again. Okay, Pepper is moving. It's still running. I think it's uh, stuck on the compass mode too, because it's used the VSLAM to try to make a uh, um, crack the deviation. Okay, I'm gonna stop that game and uh, try to make run again. And the compass move two. It's kind of a little long time, but you should wait. You can see the pepper just use the V slam 
trying to make the right point. But the program is still running. Now it's still stuck on the compress mode too. Adjust a little bit, adjust a little bit on the wheel and to find the right direction. Okay, I think it's a file. That means it's gonna finish the, finish the program. And how about uh, we, we skip this one. We, we, we try to use the move tower. I'm going to uh, try to recreate. We just uh, uh, connect the motor directly. OK, I'm going to run this program. OK, this is a move towards function. This is a move a little bit. As the as the parameter speed, but it's always gonna move around because we don't have delay on it. Okay, the pepper still. Okay, this is all done with the top move tower. To finish that the uh, or finish fish finish on the move field. But this is okay, but we can see the function, how the function work. Okay, that's the uh, how's the program running. And uh, I'm gonna try back to um, Jeffrey and that's, uh, I'm gonna continue our course, okay. Okay, thanks Austin. Okay, let me put back my screen. Okay, I hope you can see uh, my screen from now. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, move to the next part. Okay, so with that, uh, we have completed uh, the basic movement. And I, I believe with the tools that we just introduced just now, you can actually do a lot of um, movement, like the base movement. And if you couple together with the body motion that we explained last week, then you can actually um, arrange a lot of different kind of um, performance for your pepper. But the performance, as you can see, like when the pepper move and then with the uh, body motion, it might still not that attractive, but if we can add the sound, for example, like if you can play a sound, play a song, and also pepper can say something, uh, can do something like singing uh, along with the movement, then it will become a very attractive um, performance. Okay, so the next thing we are going to um, show you is this uh, multimedia function. So multimedia function, as the names imply, so you can play some videos, you can play some song, you can show some images, and also you can show an interactive um, web page. Okay, so with that, actually, um, there are a few instruction box that you can use, and it is pretty much straightforward. Okay, so the first one is this uh, play video. Then we have a show image and play sound. Then, okay, so these are the three that I'm going to explain here. So for the play video, you can see the output start on, on, on started or on stop. Okay, so this is uh, very typical. But for the input, uh, other than the normal on start or on stop, you have something extra called on pause video or on resume video. So it actually adds um, a control for you to pause your video or to resume your video. So that make it easy for you. For example, like you have a long video and you want to pause the video in between to do something else. So that actually um, give you some control over your video that you can uh, synchronize this um, play and stop of your video with other behavior of Pepper. For example, like Pepper can do some movement, Pepper can say something while you're playing the video and you can synchronize these two. And that will become very handy if you want to incorporate your video 
as one of the part of your pepper performance. Okay, so this is something that um, will be very useful for you if you want to play some video in front. Then um, for this show image, I think like this show image uh, can be used like um, in many, many uh, ways, not just to show that image, but also to feedback, for example, like uh, when you do face recognition, you can show the image of the person that the paper recognized, for example. And that is a very important feedback for the user during the interaction because like a lot of things you need the confirmation, you need um, some like you can show an image to tell the user what is the internal state or what are the things that um, currently Pepper is executing and so on. So this show image uh, is actually a very uh, handy tool for you to do some um, feedback to the user in a very like um, other than the text, you can show image which is like it's more uh, catchy or more obvious for user because like the user might don't look very closely on the panel. So um, if let's say you are writing some words on the screen, it might be not so visible, but if you show an image, then actually that give a very strong and also obvious signal to the user in terms of feedback. Okay, so for this show image, uh, similar to the video, you have this on hide image and on preload image. Okay, so by the name, you know, like you actually can hide the image or, or preload the image before you want to show the image. And this, uh, maybe you might not so show how, why you need to hide the image or uh, preload the image. You just need to show the image, right? But um, for this, usage later on you will see like when we implement and we use this box we need to hide the image or hide the image before okay in order to show something else so this is something like to manage the resources of showing the image because like once you show the image the image might start there even in the memory and then you need some uh, operation to actually manage this uh, memory usage so that is why you have this uh, kind of input that you need to uh, fit in before you can use this um, show image instruction box effectively in your program. Then the next one is play sound. And for play sound, the input output is very, very simple. It's just on start and on start. And then uh, it can play MP3. So for the sound, you can play MP3 format. WAV format or OGG format. But over here, it actually recommend to say that you, if you can use WAV format, uh, it will have, you can play more smoothly, which means like uh, less tendency that you will have the delay. Because like maybe MP3 and OGG format, it requires some additional processing that it will cause some small delay. So if possible, try to prepare the WAV format and for this show image, um, play sound or the play video, you need to, before your operation or before your program, you need to prepare the file inside uh, the directory of the system inside Pepper, which is uh, it is within a HTML file, very similar like web page that later on Austin will show you like where, where is the location. So you need to prepare your file and save it over there so that it can be played during the operation. Okay, so as usual, you open up um, the example in this uh, folder number five, um, multimedia. You can see uh, we already put down the play video, play sound, then we have a delay for the show image. And behind there, we have two combination box, which is um, it is hide web page and also display web, web page. Okay, so we will show you how to display a, a web page as well as uh, additional um, resources or information that you can display on the uh, tablet. Okay, so if you open up, so all these are like the original boxes. So you just need to like open up the setting to see if you need to do anything. But let's have a look on the combination box. For this height web view, okay, this one inside there only got one like this one, which is the height web view. So you hide the website that, uh, or you hide the web page that you want to display. You need to hide it first, and then you display. Right? It may sound a bit funny, but this is the operation or this is the procedure 
for you to display the web page. And inside this display web page, uh, you need to address, uh, you need to first set the web address. Okay, so what is the web address? You need to fit it into the show web view. And over here, there is a, a small remark to remind you, every time when you fit in the web address, you need to always re, uh, indicate the HTTPS or, or, or the, the starting uh, protocol for your web address. So if over here you just write www.google.com or anything, it might give you error. So you need to always remember to put in the HTTP uh, header for your web address. And then you use the show web view to show your website. Okay, right. So basically you will get something like this. Once you like play it, you can see like it play a video will look like this. Yeah, something like this. And you try to imagine like with this running and then Pepper can do some movement or explain, uh, give some narration for the video and it actually give a more um, attractive way for story storytelling, for example. Like if you design a robot for the education use or for in-class use, then the video will show a video and then the Pepper can do some narration can do some explanation and that makes the whole storytelling more interesting and attractive. Okay, so I'll pass to Austin to show you the demonstration. Okay, okay. I'm gonna show this um, demo, uh, but, but before that we know it's, it's kind of easy uh, to use all this uh, uh, command, uh, uh, standard instruction box. Um, we're gonna open the last one. Yeah. It's and uh, um, multimedia and uh, combination. We're going to open this uh, PML. Okay. Um, the program is kind of combination of the box in, in a sequence. That means we're going to run this play video and play sound and show image and hide web page, even the display web page. It's called, uh, it's, it's all, it's all the standard instructor, instructor box before, but, but only accept this to one. Let me introduce one of each, and the first one is going to play video. And okay, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Okay, we're gonna uh, try this program, and um, this is uh, what look like when I open this um, project. And um. As we as we can see here, is we we have the uh, command uh, standard structure box from the play video and a play sound and a show image and hide the web page even the display uh, display web page. But except that this two, this is combination box. But in the inside of this box, we only see uh, the uses the uses a command uh, standard structure box. Okay. I'm gonna introduce the each of each of other and try to make a stand on uh, how we use it and uh, how easy is that? Okay. Uh, first, first one is we use is play video and in video that means um, uh, we can search uh, our box library play video, uh, but we should uh, um, notice and uh, to know more details about this box. But it, we can see here the description play the video return when it's done. Right. Um, okay. That means we we will focus on the setting parts. We open it. They just only have the video video simple uh, dot mp4. Okay. We're gonna. So that's the only file we used for this play video. But where the file is? Okay. Uh, when we we should check our the project file here. They, we can we can see here the behavior and HTML and the translation and the manifest. They just uh, have the actual actual director director because HTML when I uh, collapse when I open this uh, open directory we can see they have three files and one is a um, uh, image another one is uh, MP, MP4 MP4 and MP3 and um, this is for audio this is for video so why but we, we should notice that noted that the HTML director must be have because um, based on the based on the pepper the structure a structure that means the uh, the, the tablets always the tablets always have the connection with the pepper's head but the uh, but how they 
try to make uh, a message from the head, they only use the CS, CS structure. That means that the Howard browser here try to uh, you know, connect to the D a a a HTTP service and uh, to get the out, um, out, out the files from the head and it is placed on the tablets. So that means we, that means we name it the director name. Uh, director name is, is HTML. This must be so. Just uh, uh, if uh, if you want to use out of this, this uh, multimedia box, must have this uh, directory to contain all the materials we have. Okay, including the the image and uh, and the audio audio file and the video file. Okay. So like the play video, we, we just uh, try to open it. They just don't even don't have the pass. Once you just uh, put it, put it, uh, put it under the HTML, we just uh, write the name on it. That's okay. We don't have the exactly or relative uh, pass on it. Okay. This is a very important part of which to remember that. Okay, as we well, as we know that it's a, stand, it's a standard structure box, we should know more details about the inputs outputs. The inputs that we have is uh, uh, for the whole view of the box. We can see they have, they have the black uh, black color here. That means all the, the active active uh, function. So from the on start, this is start the uh, box and then stop the box and even the on post because video they, they have more. Uh, more um, operations on it. On this one, it's going to post the video, and other ones kind of resume the video. When we stop, we can resume the uh, the current uh, position to continue to run. Okay, let me see the, this uh, outputs. They, they even have the on starting. That means we got, that means we have the actual actual logic we can play. Like uh, when the, when the, when we. Play this activity, this play video box. That means they're gonna at the first time they're gonna they're gonna try to make this uh, output running. Maybe we can do some actions on this play video. We can try to connect to another box. That means they're gonna play video. While, meanwhile, they're gonna play the dance. Okay, but in this but in this program we don't have the, any logic on it. So we're gonna try to look at the next one. It's unstop it. That means we're gonna stop it all the play video 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 parts and then stop it to trying to make the sound. Oh, play sound is a very easy one, but we, we should have focused on more about the uh, notice uh, because like the like what is Jeffrey said and the play sound files like file is a parameter and the format uh, could be wave OGG and and uh, MP, MP3. But I think recommended to use the w the wave the wave uh, format. So just just what we need to uh, care about. Okay, when we click the setting parts, we can see here they use the whole whole whole. Uh, it's not a whole. It's a relative. It's a relative pass to find the sound file. Just to remember, this is a whole different between the preview. But we try to add it on it. Yeah, maybe we can don't uh, uh, yeah we don't write the uh, the real pass manually. We can we can select from this uh, from this part. Okay. Another one is kind of show image. Show image is the same one. You know, I think as before, previous box is like uh, uh, my open setting. It's the same like the audio one, and it just try to edit try to uh, loading the image simple pin dot png uh, file. And uh, but they have uh, more inputs, but only one have one one, one outputs. So we're gonna see um, they have delay connect delay box to connect on it. That means it's gonna they are the tablets uh, the showing the showing the uh, image. That means this is critical critical source. We need to release the after we use it. That means when uh, the first one they're gonna delay five seconds. And hide the image. That means um, this is a uh, uh, displays its image is only only five 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 seconds. Okay, another one is gonna start and unstop. It is the same as the other uh, uh, box, and we also have the preload preload image. That means 
when the picture or some files is very large, even large, we, we need to preload in, preloading this file into the box because uh, you know, without this function, that means when we, when we face the large, large file, we need to wait for a long time. Okay. But it's, it's kind of um, not that useful um, with the uh, with, uh, image because um, sometimes we only have very small uh, uh, size or image file. Okay. When it is finished, fin after five seconds, this uh, uh, instruction box is going to finish and I'm trying to hide the web page. You can see here they only have the uh, two uh, combined box. Uh, we can see it, uh, for for each one. The first one got a hide web page. When we click on it, only one box here. But we can search on it if uh, try to check out is this is uh, this is a standard uh, structure box or not. Hide, okay. They have hide like that. Which is a comparison between this one is the same, and. We should see the description, hide the web view, HTML content on templates, and a general kind of cover. Okay, this is only just to release, release all the resources to want to be ready to use this, uh, uh, this tablets. Okay. Then we're going to see the display web page and the more complicated because you have the text, uh, text edit, but we use it to do, to come, um, edit the web page, right? Uh, we try to load in the Baidu.com. Just remember that all the website, website link, we need to focus on, we need to remember, we always use the HTTPS because on Pepper, we, we, we also have the security part. So we need to S to add it on. And then last part, we, we try to add in other web page like uh, uh, www.google.com or other um, domain, whatever is that. They're trying to make a strain to transfer into the show show web page. One of that is to start the show web page, but it but it but it will show web we got to know which website they needed to display, and this is uh, this is it. And it only transfer the string into this uh, show web web page wheel. Okay, that's all the pro all the program running. So it's kind of simple, and I'm gonna try to make what you like on real paper. Okay. I'm gonna stop my screen and share here. We need to, to do just uh, focus on the uh, tablets on Pepper. Um, I'm gonna run it. I just remember that uh, because this program have lots of uh, uh, materials, the, they need to upload to the Pepper. They need to have a long time. Oh, this is a preliminary part. And then they're gonna play song. You can see, you can hear the song. And uh, they gonna show the image after the second gonna be over. Okay. Let me check what happened. Okay, we're gonna try it run again. And the play song. Show image. Oh, this is only two seconds. Okay, that I think that's it because might be the web page is called the stock, maybe. But you can try um, up this class. I think it's gonna work every time. 
Okay, I'm gonna stop running this program. I'm trying to get back uh, to Jeffrey. And thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, um, Austin. Okay, let me get back to my screen and continue the class. Okay, I've come to the end of uh, the class. Okay, but um, this last part, uh, I would like to take some time to conclude the class and also the further development that you can do with the things that you learn because like this class actually serve as a big you start with uh, for your paper development. Okay, but we don't stop here because like, there are actually many uh, other information that you, you you need to know so that you know how much more that you can develop. Okay, so let me start with the conclusion. So we already conclude um, for online classroom and for the first week we discuss about how to set up the environment. So um, basically you need to install Choreograph, but during that time I also explained that Choreograph is not the only tools that you can use for your development because like Pepper actually uh, can be programmed in many ways, okay? Uh, whether it's a very graphical way like Choreograph and even we got a simple web-based tools called Roboblox uh, for more younger students to learn how to program Pepper. But on from Choreograph, you actually see like there are many things that we refer to now API, and we also have custom Python uh, box that you can use to write customized code. So which mean we actually have another set of tools which is like span from there so that you can write like customized Python code. You can even use code base, okay, not ways to interact and also write program to your robots so that is totally possible and we actually in my team we use a lot of that and also we interface with other software framework for example the ROS framework the ROS framework that give us a lot of powerful tool from the robotics side to enhance the functionality of Pepper okay which is I will show you some example after this and of course like not just stop here uh, for Pepper 2.5 you can actually upgrade to 2.9 which will make your robot upgraded to the Android version. And for the Android version, you can actually do a lot of that uh, software robotics for your robots as well. But that is totally a, a new platform. So you may can find out more information from the software robotics uh, website. Okay, so once we have the environment set up on the first class also, uh, we show you our GitHub repository. Okay, so that is the sample code that you can that will help you to start because like we use the sample code uh, together with our slides and also materials to explain to you all the functionality for you to start with your Pepper um, development. So um, you might want to search back the uh, our video and also our materials on the first class to see all the resources. Okay. And also for this class, we also uh, introduce like uh, a website to store all the uh, course materials for your easy uh, to, to find out all the materials in one places uh, in one place so that you don't need to like save all the link and you go to many places like for example, you go to the YouTube for the video and you go to other place for other thing so you can have everything in one place for you to refer and also not forgetting we actually like uh, have uh, assignment every time uh, for, for today's assignment okay I will show you after this that we have assignment for you to actually uh, try to revise the important part of the particular class and also to show you some additional work that you can do with the example okay then we start from the second week, we show you the speech interaction, which is um, basically we show you a few ways to make robot able to have conversation with human. So we're starting with the uh, speech synthesis, which is a say text or say, and then uh, we show you the dialogue. OK, the dialogue um, tools that you can actually design 
the Q and A for Pepper to respond uh, because it already have the built in um, speech recognition. So based on the script that you already prepare, and the script is not just like one way or a, a rigid script, which is you have some rules, the rules that you can extend uh, to make it very interactive. For example, like the concept of hello, it can be hello, hi, how are you, or, or like good morning, and so on. So and then you can randomize your answer to make uh, the robot able to respond in a more natural and also not very rigid, like every time the same reply for the same question and so on. So it become very interactive and also very interesting. So that is for the speech part. And also for the implementation, not forgetting about the um, the, the the sound localization that uh, during the conversation, you can make Pepper to turn towards the person so that you can speak to that person in a more, how to say, proper manner. Because like for human social etiquette, we need to look at the person and talk to that person face to face. And that is a, a more acceptable manner, right? So you can actually design Pepper to do the same thing as well uh, for the speech uh, or for a conversation. Then in the third um, week, we show you how to use the virtual perception functionality of Pepper, particularly for use to do like face detection, face recognition. Uh, so from the detection, which is like you can see like how many people actually appear in front of Pepper, like within the vision uh, area. Then you can also train Pepper uh, by like teaching Pepper like this face uh, belongs to this name. I mean like this name, okay, this person, uh, what name you can like pair it with that particular face so that Pepper can memorize this information so that the next time the same person come into the vision uh, area, then the Pepper will know like, okay, who and who actually like appear in front and what you should do after that. Okay, so you can like um, design your logic uh, to see how you want to deal with different person. For example, like for people that you don't know, then Pepper might uh, want to give some information or say some greeting and so on. And for those that you already know, then your speech maybe can turn to like, okay, so for this person that particular you know, then the conversation will, we will use this, this um, set of conversation uh, for the interaction and so on. So you can combine the visual and also the, the audio together and make Pepper become very interactive with uh, the user uh, surrounding uh, the Pepper. Uh, and also depends on your what kind of application that you design. So this will actually enhance and also improve the service uh, provided by Pepper. Then last week we discussed about the body motion. So body motion, uh, we show you a few way how you want to arrange the body motion like you, you can teach Pepper how to move uh, its body uh, for a certain, for example, like um, sequence. And that sequence, maybe you can use it for like um, a dance move or a certain expression uh, or when you want to provide some information, you want to uh, couple with very nice body gesture. Okay, so those are the things that you can do. And even we show you the animation way, which is you can actually hold the part of the body uh, of Pepper uh, directly with the real robot and you can like record down the keyframe that you want so that Pepper can move uh, the body according to exact position, uh, exact pose or gesture that you want. So with that, you can actually move the pepper. And also you, we, we know that when we design the timeline, you can actually couple with uh, the speech and also the, 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 the speech and also the visual uh, function that you have developed. So we can couple them together. Then uh, continue with uh, today's class uh, for the body motion, you can add with the leg motion, which is the movement okay so the whole pepper body can move along uh, with the body motion and also we have uh, we also show you one very interesting uh, example which is a follow me the people tracking example that uh, will be very useful uh, in a lot of application that require the robot to like accompany someone to a certain places to certain places for example like uh, you might want to follow your like operator to a certain place, then the operator will continue with the next operation. Okay, so these are the things that you can design. Then lastly, we show you the multimedia, which is like, uh, it is very similar like when you want to design a presentation by using your tablet or by using your uh, laptop, 
uh, but now you can have this presentation together with the robots, right? So as just now you can see like uh, the demonstration by Austin, you can actually play the video. And then if let's say you are designing, for example, a storytelling a robot, then you can have the video showing in front and then Pepper can actually do some narration. Pepper can do some interaction with the user and that make the whole uh, process become more lively and also interactive because like if you just have a tablet then the user might just look at the screen but if let's say you you you, you have the interaction you may can design a like a 3d um, games and so on that you can interact with the user after this i will show you some um, further information uh, that what you can do up after this okay but before that let me show you the assignment for today Okay, so let me go to the assignment. Okay, which is, uh, if you come to, okay, yeah, this one. So let's look at the assignment for today. So I have prepared two assignments that for you to revise uh, for the content today. Okay, okay, let me open up. Right, so for the first uh, question or first assignment, it's like you use the dialogue program that you create in your speech uh, uh, interaction class to control the pepper robot to start and stop following okay so you combine the speech and the following uh, example so how you want to do that is basically it's just uh, the logic that you need to uh, add in uh, from the speech program and also the following the people tracking program you just need to merge these two programs together with the condition of like when I say follow, then you go follow. Or you say stop follow, then you stop follow. Okay. And you can also not just doing this following, you can also combine the speech, uh, the speech part with your movement part. For example, like you can do something like go forward, go backward, left or right, then the robot will move accordingly, like, like in a in a short distance, like 0.5 and so on. So it is a very um, useful uh short program that you can incorporate in your bigger program because like sometimes you might want the robot to like move a little bit left or right or front or back for certain operation so you can use this thing okay then you, you you can use like please follow me then the robot will follow you or don't follow me then the robot will stop follow you okay and you can use also like stop in order for the robot to exit the program as well so it's totally like combination of the second one uh, the the speech uh, interaction uh, example with the example today but inside there you can actually add in the vision part as well so it's up to you and over here we give you a tips like how you want to do this because that you got like multiple condition like it depends on what type of um, um, speech recognition result then you will need to do something so you need to like put down a few cases so over here um, if you still remember in the first class when we introduced the instruction box library so we have uh, one category called the logic that inside there you can find uh, an instruction box called switch case. Okay, so you can switch the case that like, depends on what the input then you can go to do something. So it depends on what the instruction given, then the robot supposed to do something according to the instruction given. Okay, so you can use the switch case for this. Okay, so this one is for the movement uh, part. Then uh, at the end for the multimedia and then you add in everything. So uh, for the combination, uh, this is also actually similar to the competition task, which is you combine all the function that you learned before and you design and develop the following service robot. So whether it's an instructor of um, science and technology museum uh, or whatever, uh, what type of museum that you can, you can um, imagine. For example, you can imagine uh, you want Pepper to become like a tour guide in a museum. Okay, so you can have like follow me to this direction or, or to this and then you stop at a particular painting then uh, Pepper start to explain about this painting and then you might can use your tablet to show some uh, more extra information about the painting you can show the like the video of the author uh, the, the painter sorry and, and the rest like yeah you can you can show many things and then you can show also the website of the particular uh, information about the art piece and so on Okay, or you can do like a reception, uh, receptionist in front of the hall of a 
banks or retail or anything like the last one is for the retail like you can have a shopping guide for the uh, supermarket or shopping malls or some retail shops and so on that the uh, user can come and find more information for example like you can promote some product you can um, give some information about the products you can give some extra information about like you can play a video about the products and so on so these are the things that you have learned and by combining all the example together you can make something like that okay so this is the things that i hope you can uh, try out by your own okay so the next thing like before i end the whole session is i want to show you a few uh, videos that my teams develop over the time uh, to show you some further development that you can do. So for example, like in the speech interaction, you can do like multiple lingual, uh, multilingual um, dialogue. So you can have Pepper to speak in multiple language in one particular dialogue. So for example, like um, previously we developed a robot for a convenience store, like for example, a convenience store in Japan that always have a lot of foreign uh, tourists come to ask some direction or ask some information and that is um, how Pepper can actually give more services to this kind of scenario compared to a normal uh, human worker. Okay, then you can enrich the content of uh, dialogue rules. It's like, yeah, we show you some simple rules like the U1, U2, and then the concept. You can actually enhance this and write a very long uh, and complicated like rules so that Pepper can have very in-depth conversation with the user. Or you can also use the Python API to connect uh, Pepper with online speech recognition API. For example, like you can use Google Speech, you can use other services like um, IBM and other, other which give you the dialogue engine that you can, yeah, like the, the, the next one, the automatic reply using online chatbot interface and so on. So these are the things that you can go further with the tools that we already show it to you. And all this development you can done in Choreograph with just the customized uh, Python code. And yes, you it's, it is very possible that you can do it with just Choreograph. Then for the visual perception, uh, for example, like we want more advanced um, image processing. For example, like we want a very sophisticated object uh, recognition for certain particular uh, scenario then we can use um, some uh, web services that provide you this, info, uh, this image processing or object recognition uh, services that what you need to do is you just need to connect the image feed from Pepper and then you send the image. You already know how to get the image. So you can send this image to the cloud and then you can get back the result and uh, Pepper receive the result and start to uh, give some additional information about the image. Then for object learning and recognition, the same thing. So those services that online, you can even use like machine learning to train a big um, collection of photos that you can provide and then you can get the model for the recognition and so on. So there are many things that you can do. Then for multimedia, yeah, you can develop like interactive um, interface. For example, like in this video, you can see. So this is the HTML and then you've got a button when you press a particular button, then Pepper will do something. So you can use this um, button that you create virtually on the website uh, to give the interactive interface. And this is very useful, uh, especially when you want to design some games, some simple games that you need the user to have some input. OK, so this is something that you can you can think of, right? Oh, sorry. OK, then for 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 the Nauchi SDK. So if let's say you want to go a bit further more, you can use the Nauchi SDK, which is a Python SDK. Then for visual perception, you can do a lot like you can get the, the image and do deep learning uh, for object recognition and so on. Posture detection like the open pose or QR code, barcode scanning. This one will be very useful for retail application. And then for the movement, we can even do like autonomous navigation. For example, like we can do mapping, we can do like uh, path planning and so on. And this one, um, one of our development is we use this, uh, the ROS navigation package together with um, Pepper in order for the Pepper to like navigate in a complicated or, or, or complex environment. And then Pepper can actually like uh, do the path planning and move from point A to point B without uh, autonomously okay 
Then others will be like access to database. You can create a database on cloud or you can have the IoT things that you can connect people with other sensors, other devices in the, in the surrounding. Uh, there are a few like retail application, even like Pepper can send that information and print it out from the printer. You can get some information from an external sensor and so on. These are all the things that are possible. So uh, just to show you some development that uh, done by my team, for example, like this one, we use um, uh, deep learning based um, jet recognition uh, and also like human posture, for example, like gesture, like waving. So how to make Pepper able to detect a waving, waving um, gesture and so on. So these are all the things that we need to use the now GSDK to to okay to achieve. So this one is uh, the map that I say just now that you can use the map and also the navigation, uh, which is we interface with other uh, software framework to get this thing done. But we need to interface with uh, the sensors and also the actuator in Pepper in order for uh, this thing to work. So that's why you need the Archie SDK to control the robot. Then um, we also have one example that we use Pepper in retail. So let me show you this that combine with the function that I mentioned just now. So first is like, for example, we have multiple lingua. If you can hear just now, it can speak in Engli uh, English and also Mandarin or, or Japanese. Then it start to use the face recognition, which is this one is done externally, not using the function, the, the built-in function by um, by the Nauchi system. So once we detect the person, then we can connect to our database that we can find out the things that previously bought by this person. So we have the, the shopping history that we can make Pepper do some recommendation based on this history. So this will actually give a lot of AI uh, power to Pepper uh, to provide the services. Right, then we can use um, the navigation, which is it can actually guide the person to a particular shelf in order to get the, 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 the product that the customer want. And this one uh, is, uh, how to say, is very useful, for example, like in the museum scenario as well, as just now what I said, like Pepper can lead a group of people to go around the museum and explain the and give the information about the item inside the museum. Then over here we use, uh, for example, like the QR code. Yeah, we scan the QR code so that the paper can actually get information from the web about certain product and feed it back feedback to the user. Right. And yeah, and 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 we even like, for example, like. We can use some, um, okay, so this is a database. And we can even like use the QR code for the payment and, and, and so on. So Pepper already have all the hardware that we can do this. So we can build all the infrastructure and design Pepper as a, a total solution for the retail uh, services. Okay. Right, so with that, I have come to the end. I have finished all the content. So thanks a lot for all of you to join and also follow us throughout this five week. Uh, but not forgetting also, I would like to say thanks a lot for our sponsor, which is uh, SoftBank Robotics. And also thanks um, SoftBank Robotics Engineer, which is Austin and also Edward and all other uh, colleagues that help us uh, throughout this whole class um, period to show you very cool uh, demonstration of the Pepper robot because uh, it will be very, how to say, boring if let's say I just show you the slides and so on, but everything become very um, interesting once you can see the real robot in action, although we are doing all this thing in online classes, but you can still see the real robot, which is, I think will be very useful for you to uh, do the same thing or do your, or, or in your learning with your Pepper robot later on. Okay, so thanks a lot, um, SoftBank Robotics, and also thanks a lot for all of you who joined this uh, session and I hope this material will be very useful for you to learn more about Pepper and I wish you good luck for your development of Pepper. So lastly, I will really hope that you can join our competition, which is the Online Challenge 2021, uh, which is I will give you more information after the class. So please stay back and don't leave the, the session yet. Uh, I would like to conclude here and stop the recording, then we can uh, proceed with the interactive uh, session. 
Okay, thank you very much.